This so. conference will now be recorded. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> oh. The, uh, yeah, ever since our last meeting, I had been fighting these rolling migraines. I haven't had them for a while. I have my periodical ones, but not these rolling ones. As soon as you get over rid of one, you have like a half an hour to a couple hours of good time. And then it goes right back to full-blown migraine yeah. but still my vision yeah. on my left eye you guys still look weird or than usual well that's yeah that's what i was gonna say i always look weird but yeah she thought i had a stroke was it yesterday i think it was because the whole left side of my face was completely numb oh wow i couldn't feel oh, the whole cool. left side of my face it was wild yeah my wife and my daughter get migraines i haven't ever had one that i know of you know but oh I, you would I, know they're, yeah yep. they're not fun for sure and it depends on which type you get to yeah cool all right well welcome everybody nice so, start to laser talk and we just had a question so we can start there it's in the chat uh what no, is that's a not a question. Oh, was that you <laughs> that's me po oh. that's me posting that video spamming, and our, <laughs> spamming our webinar uh, no, it's the video explaining what, what the difference between them is. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if anybody has any questions, you know, jump in. Otherwise, we're liable to just, you know, mess so around. On the other, that, so you're good. Yeah, that's, that's just the header of the actual thing, so that's why I put it all okay. there. Okay. The, all I saw was the text and not the link. And I was like, oh, here's a good topic. We can talk about this for the whole hour. But anyway. yeah. yeah, the other half of Team Trouble should be here. <laughs> Travis. He must, he must have had too too much uh, dessert. Oh, Brian, so you guys looking forward to your little snow yeah, that's coming your way? Yeah, we got a blizzard coming tomorrow night. No, the last time it happened, I didn't have internet for 30 hours, and I was trying to do he, things on my phone on a hotspot, and I'm going to tell you something. It made me mad enough. I almost had to buy a new phone. I can't function. I, I'm used to having multiple displays where I can operate and doing it on a cell phone sitting in the car. Doesn't happen. You notice how that storm takes a deep dive south and then it hits about Georgia and Florida. And it's like, nope, we're going back. <laughs> yeah. He's scared of all those uh, snowbirds. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. It looks like North Carolina and South Carolina is going to get hit nasty hard. Mm -hmm. um, we're beta testing a firmware. Here's a good topic until somebody jumps in. I want a beta test. And I don't, I don't know if I can talk about it, but I will. Um, we're it, getting, it, possibly getting rid of minimum power. See, the the Ruida has that, but I don't think the uh, a lot of the other controllers even have a setting for minimum power. So, what we found is it was built in there, you know. So if you go slower around a vector, you know, since the dwell is longer with the beam <laughs> there, it'll operate at that minimum power, right? But once you there burn you. the material away, it's not going to just run away burn with it sitting there. Once it's hit the area, you know, that's precise enough. That beam is precise and finite enough that not much more material is going to burn once it's burnt in, you know, where it's at. So the dwell yeah. isn't a huge idea. Uh, and, and I think even Oz had talked about it at one point about not having minimum power or making light burn adopt minimum power to max power and then just not ask for it, you know to eliminate all those headaches with minimum power, but evidently it's not as useful, you know, as I mean, I've, <laughs> I've never and, used it. Yeah. It causes trouble with the power scale. You know, if you try to do a, a cut test using a power scale and you get to yep. five millimeter or 10 millimeters or below, it messes up your thing, you know? We, so we're looking at a, at a firmware and that'll do that. And it's supposed to correct the air uh, assist uh, sequencing issues. So, and you know, for this firmware don't, you know, I get emails about, do I need to upgrade the firmware in this thing? And it's not like a phone or a computer or a motherboard or something. Um, the firmware in these things is the, the rule is don't ever change it unless you absolutely have to. And there's only been like three or four revisions in the past 20 years. So it's not something that gets updated regularly, but if, if this comes out, it'll eliminate the minimum power stuff and all the rabbit holes associated with it. So it should so be does a that, good thing. So does that mean you able to, since like say the Mindster said it's hard coded, it's quote unquote hard coded at seven percent. So I'll be able to actually drop below that theoretically drop below seven percent. 
No, that no, your oh, your okay. caps are a totally different thing. Uh, okay. I'm, talk <laughs> uh, I'm talking about when you're vectoring and the head travels at 10 millimeters per second or slower, it uses the minimum power oh, value instead okay. of the maximum. That's like and, that's like if you're doing a if you're doing like a 90 degree corner, for instance, it'll slow down prior to the corner and then speed up as yeah. it leaves the corner. Yeah, and with the, the minimum yeah. power in there. Okay, right. and the now. theory is so that it'll ramp down to minimum so that as the laser goes slower and dwells in that area longer, it won't overburn. But really, that's not a huge problem. Like I said, a lot of controllers don't even have a minimum power setting. So we think by eliminating that, um, it will make everything a lot better and smoother. So basically, it will know on its own to... It just won't be there. I mean, it won't matter. Okay. The, the, the max power, you just set your power. You don't have to worry about a max okay. and a min. It'll eliminate a whole bunch of rabbit holes. You know. Now, uh, I have yeah. noticed, like going around some corners, if I don't have the men set, it will go through. Right. Like, say, if you're using eighth inch and you're yeah. set at 700 speed, and you're at 20, and <clears throat> you know, you don't set your minimum, and you're staying straight at 20, it will yeah. hit that corner and go through it where the RS doesn't. I can't think. Yeah, but yeah, More I mean, I, I think it'll be a good thing. It'll be one less variable in there that you have to worry about or could get possibly incorrect or not set or something, you know, so. And of course, it won't launch unless we do. You know, we're going to do some extensive testing on it. I've got it. I'm going to put it on both of my Odin's uh, and my Nova and I'm going to send it to Chris and let him put it on his Nova and uh, we'll test it out real good and collaborate with China before we roll anything out and then we'll provide instructions on how to do it. That's the only time I'll ever ask you to use RD works. <laughs> Send the Travis. Did I just he'll bring hear it. That right? What's that? Did I just hear that right? RD works. Yeah. Load the firmware. Yeah. Last for me. <laughs> hey Brian, oh. I got a couple of questions on that uh, topic. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. Is there a general rule of thumb with the max and the minimum power? Yeah. The general rule of thumb is set the minimum, whatever you set the maximum. Okay. Across the board for fill and line across the board. Okay. The only, that, uh, that's, that's a proactive setting, not a reactive one, meaning you would only change it if you saw something that wasn't right and you thought that would help, not the other way around. You, you see okay. what I mean? Yep. Uh, the other question is um, when setting the speed, what what is the real practical usefulness of that? In other words, I I know that there's a rating of two thousand millimeters per second, but what what really is the, the I'm I've been experimenting with um, heat transfer vinyl, which requires minuscule power and and obviously mm -hmm. as fast as I can get the thing to move. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious when I set the thing to fifteen hundred, is it really fifteen hundred? I mean, what's the practical use of that? Um, well, on the Novas, the max is a thousand millimeters per second. Is at least that's what we publish. We can probably achieve twelve hundred, uh, okay. about the same as Aeons. We just don't publish it because we like to be conservative. Kind of like we say, our eighty watt machines are eighty watt. They're really eighty eight. They have to, you know, be ten percent higher than what we publish. Um, right. It's a but, balancing act, really. Yeah. To get, to yeah. Get the An RF tube out of it. would be. Uh, E real easy to dial in on that stuff. Um, what wattage is your machine? 130. Yeah, so you're you're you got the highest power, and that's going to be the highest ionization threshold, which means the the highest minimum power you can output a stable beam with. So you use speed to compensate for that power. You know that minimum power that you can't get any lower than. Right. Uh, yeah. The problem with that is, depending on if you're if you're doing vector engraves, you know, if you have letters and you created them in Lightburn and used fill, it would be fine to go probably six, seven, eight, nine hundred millimeters per second on those. Where you run into trouble is, you got to think about this. This is an invisible beam of light running around on mirrors, so those mirrors are slinging back and forth that fast too. You know, as the gantry is right. moving around and doing things, and you can turn your dots into lines if you move too fast and the pulsing, mm -hmm. the maximum pulse frequency of the, of the beam has something to do with it as well, but that's another rabbit hole. Right. Um, so with heat, with heat transfer vinyl, it's, it's really uh, mostly line, you know, you're, you're cutting out the shapes and you're trying to do what, what's called a kiss cut, which is just barely yeah. 
cutting get, through the top layer of vinyl to keep the but transfer. Not the right. right. And, and and when I do my heat treat, I engrave. And that way I don't have to weed anything. I engrave it right off. So right. that's oh. another, another thing. But you're right. You're you're using a really high power tool to do a very delicate thing. So it's going to be, uh, you know, mind boggling to dial that in. Right. And can, I've, I've been trying I've been trying to calibrate it as best I can. But when I'm looking at the machine, I'm thinking, well, like does 1500 millimeters per second really mean anything yeah. practically. Well, so that's, that's why I wanted to know it what doesn't. Uh, yeah. You know, first of all, it maxes out in vectoring. If you're cutting, you know, doing line art, uh, it maxes out at 500 millimeters per second. And realistically, you'll never achieve those speeds, especially if you're cutting out letters. There's no way it can ever accelerate that fast or even get going that fast around right. that stuff to even, you know, begin to get there. And that's all mm -hmm. hard coded in the motion planning, you know, however, right. Ruita and Lightburn, you know, work together to, to plan all those motions. But, um, yeah, it, it's tricky with what you're trying to do is going to take a whole lot of dialing in. That's right. going to be tough. It's hard to dial a 40 watt machine into that heat transfer stuff. Right. <laughs> One other question is, uh, um, what brand of heat vinyl are you using? Um, I got it from, um, um, it's not the Cicer. It's a, it's a brand from, uh, I can't remember the name of the outfit. They, they sell all kinds of. Uh, and the, the reason I say that is not all heat transfer vinyl is safe for lasers. A lot of it still contains PVC in it. Uh, this, um, is, so, this is this uh, is this isn't PV. It's PVC free. It's um, okay. So stall. it's a, stall sells it. Yeah, stalls, all, all yes, the stalls, the stalls. All of the stall stuff is uh, PVC free. Um, Sizer is uh, PVC free. Um, uh, specialty materials and Chemica are PVC free. But a lot of your Chinese ones that you get like off of Amazon and eBay. Yeah. Um, no, all the way uh, down to uh, the Cricut one, the Cricut silhouette one. Um, also right. has um, has PVC in it, so yeah. No, I, I got the stalls, but if you have a preferred brand that's that's otherwise, I'd be interested in knowing. You know, so we bounce back and forth. Primarily, we use specialty materials is our number one go to, um, uh -huh. but that's also because we're a distributor for them as well. Um, but uh, right. si Sizer is our second uh, go to. Um, okay, but. You know, there there's some cool, unique ones out there you can get. Like, you can get uh, Puff HTV now and all that stuff. But if you're going to be doing a lot of HTV, really a laser is not what you – you need to get a, a plotter for that. Yeah, um, for me, it's mostly prototype and vinyl. We usually do uh, plastisol transfers, but – and I've managed to crank out a couple of shirts, but I'm still, you know, messing a little bit with the calibration of the machine and okay. uh, trying and, new products. It's all new to me. Yeah, and you can do it um, on the 130. I've done uh, stuff on my 130 uh, with vinyl before, um, mm -hmm. but y you've got to get into a light burn and break the default settings because you need to be able to drive your tube lower than what Thunder has its hard set to. All so right. If, well, if, what about perforation mode? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have to play around with it some. Um, what also, perforation mode just leaves a dots, right? As well. Um, and if you aren't doing super, super fine detail, as odd as it sounds, uh, switch to a four inch lens. Yep. And the reason being is it doubles your spot size, but it also, uh, decreases your power by half. Yep. Okay. I'll give that a try tonight. Yep. That's a, that's a good idea. Cause that, yeah, that, that cuts your beam density in half. So yeah, it effectively cuts your power in half when you use a four inch lens. Yeah. But, but keep uh, in mind, it does increase your spot size. Um, it's twice as big, so you're not going to hit super, super fine details, but you can still right. hit pretty good details if, with it. If you're just cutting, and even if size is a factor, then you can just use your curve offset to make up for that difference. If you're oh, cut, if you want to, if you want to cut it with the four and still maintain, you know, a perfect size, you know, because the spot size went up. But uh, perforation mode will work in this, but the idea is not so much to make dots, you make the spacing between them so tight that they actually overlap and you're going so fast there's going to be a little drift and it's going to make a solid line but what it does it pulses the laser again so it attenuates the power so you could try put it in perforation mode uh for your lines for your vector cuts and then turn your gaps in and spaces way down you know 0 0.01 millimeter or something like that and it'll right. make a solid line where you can cut it out but it'll attenuate the the power 
Okay, that's that's definitely worth a try as well. I, I like that idea. You know, Brian, I was just thinking with me going through and uh, retrofitting this uh, this thing while we're live. Uh, this is all being recorded, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yes, it is. So yeah, later on you could use this for. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of small. It's kind of a thumbnail because I don't have a sub feed for it, but absolutely. But the practicality Maybe. of how easy it actually is to retrofit live. Yeah, huh? I did mine. It was it was it was easy. He even sent wrenches. That was neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, actually it's it's going really smooth. So I mean it you know, the upgrade is not bad at all. Um are the you, only you... thing that uh that kind of caught me and I figured it out real quick, um, was I was like, Okay, I'm gonna go bag by bag. So I, I did the wheels first and then I got to these bearing blocks I'm like well crap now i gotta take the wheels back off i just put off <laughs> now are you <laughs> going little things like that but uh yeah no it's going really smooth um all the parts match up beautifully with it so is your is your rotary did it already have the metal plates or was it is that a full acrylic to a full metal i went full acrylic to full metal yeah that's my... what mine's going to is full acrylic to full metal okay you got one of the older ones then Yep, I have. Uh, I've still got an acrylic one. one here. I use, you know, one of the first ones you sent me, Jason. I'm, I still yeah. use it. No, no worries oh, yeah. on it, you know. So. I still, I still got my original prototype from what about three years now. That still works just fine. <laughs> it don't look quite like it does they do now, but <laughs> but, but it still works just fine. Yeah. Well, like I said, anybody here, feel free to kick your mic on and and fire away if you have any questions or comments or anything we'll be glad to hear from you otherwise we'll have to listen to Tra travis and myself the whole time travis Jim. travis you don't have the acrylic <laughs> plates on that do you uh yeah all my plates are acrylic oh they are yeah you got, the, okay. you got the metal plates. With that. oh you didn't get no. the metal plates no i got all the other metal parts but i didn't get the metal plates oh but i'm I got fine you. with that I replaced my plates. Uh, well, the acrylic ain't bad. You just don't burn it I with the laser. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know he had the acrylic plates. Yeah, I've got one of the uh, old, old ones. <laughs> no. Guys, being one of the newest laser owners in here, um, with the whopping two weeks under my belt, you know, the the one thing I've noticed on, I have the one behind me. It's a, it's a 35. Of course, as soon as I talk, somebody calls me. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Sorry. And actually, they're not calling me. They're calling my wife's phone, and it's connected to mine. Anyways, um, when I'm cutting, like, acrylic, or I've, and I've only done a little bit of that, or wood, I still seem to get a lot of smoke or smell outside of the machine. I, I work in a 12 by 16 shop. Mm -hmm. um, and in my mind, I'm sitting there trying to do a weather seal or something in the lid to try to help air tighten that i know there's an intake area for it but it's like what why are we still getting so much smoke escaping the machine when we have a ventilation system that i think the delay is way too long until it kicks on and i know you can flip the switch on the side of it when you turn your laser on make it stay on but what's a good way to keep from your area filling up with smoke when trying to start projects if your area is filling up with smoke, something's likely not right with the exhaust system somewhere because uh, do you have the stock fan that, that came with it? Yes. Okay. And you're using the flex. I can see uh, a little bit of it going on back there. How far does the line go from the outlet of the fan to the actual exhaust uh, for the the exhaust port? Is it right there at it? Okay. So you got a big run. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the fanny's would be all the way up, doesn't it? The, the closer, what, the closer, what, the, well, I don't know. You got I a mean, six inch, you got a six inch pipe going out. What's your outlet? Is it six or four that's inch? It. Six inch. Okay, so the, so the actual ducting back out on the left, unless he out the it. wall is six, it's inch. six inch. It's black. Okay. Huh. Um, yeah, right, no, Philip, a little bit of of an exaggeration, but you do. Like I've seen smoke in there, you smell it pretty prominent. That wood's burning, but when I've gone outside and I see the fan is kicking a lot of smoke outside the shop, okay. um, I made the mistake when I mounted everything. I put the fan on backwards, 
and it was blowing air in. So I figured gotcha. out my mistake <laughs> on that one. Um, so I, I, I'm getting the airflow. It just, I don't know, is it the delay in the fan that's causing the problem? Uh, the delay in those fans, in those axial DC fans, is because they have to spool up. They have a really weak motor. Those old green centrifugal fans we used to send had a half horse cap start motor on it, and they would be up to speed, you know, in a second. Uh, these have to spool up, so there is a little bit of a delay before you get maximum, um, you know, effect from it, and that can't be programmed in. That timer, the TL timer, only controls the amount of time it stays on after the job is complete to evacuate any remaining smoke. It won't affect how it, we, we don't currently have a way to make the fan turn on before the job is sent. There are ways you can fool Lightburn into doing that for you, you know, so that the machine will kick on and the fan will start. And then, you know, some people pause their machine uh, and send the job over and then start it. And that gives the fan time to kick on a little early those with the the aftermarket fans plug them right in the wall <clears throat> but um as far Travis, as check your messages yeah. um it, it it looks like you have a typical setup i mean you know if anybody else grabbed a thunder and set it up out of the box you know it would be real similar to that i'm sure um but I, we haven't had that. Now, weather stripping that thing may actually make it worse. There are those louvered vents in the front is the primary intake. Um, but what's that? Now, while, you're, while you're doing the job, now I understand that the, the, the initial part might get a little bit smoky, but say halfway through the job, are you still getting a lot of smoke build up in there? I wouldn't say a lot of smoke. I When I was in here cutting the other day, and it was kind of evening time, and I opened the door, you know, I could see smoke leaving the, the room going outside. I, I'm, how, I'm, where, how tight is your room? Do you have any intake air? That's where I was going. Intake how, air? Yeah, I mean, if you, yeah. I've seen it where it'll pull a door shut out of your hand, you know, if it's a real tight room, because you got to have the uh, same amount of air coming in as you do going out, you know. is Yeah, typically, typically where you can't see the door, I'll prop the door just a hair open, okay. like an okay. inch. So I have a, I have plenty of volume in to mitigate okay. back pressure to the fan. Gotcha. But like when, gotcha. we, when we did, when we did the uh, acrylic in here the other day, we couldn't even sit in here anymore. We were choking and gagging. That was just about as nasty yeah, as could be. You might want to consider been, if if you have to mount your fan where it's at. I would probably consider running hard pipe if that's the case, because it sounds like to me you're getting back pressure, which is not allowing the fan to draw the air out properly. It's it's basically just getting lost in the ducting. Because I can't see the picture real well, but it looks kind of like right out of the motor, it takes a sharp bend, and then it goes up. Oh. So anytime you have those kind of bends in there, especially with that corrugated pipe or that flex pipe, you're creating a yeah. vortex inside of there that's going to create pre back pressure. And if the How longer the run is, the worse uh, it's going to be. Another thing to consider is the top section of that, from the outlet to it goes to your exhaust. That piece of section of hose is pressurized. You've got it under pressure because it's blowing through there. So any crack or hole or even if it's permeable a little bit, it can escape out of that ducting. Whereas if you put the mm -hmm. fan right at the outlet you've created negative pressure in all of your intake plenum so that even if there is a leak it's sucking in fresh air instead of forcibly blowing the bad air into your environment does that make sense yep. yes plus two how hard of a 90 are you coming out of the back of that machine is that a soft pipe 90 coming out of the back or is that a um it's a it's the soft pipe where i just yeah i have the machine about 13, 14 inches off the wall, yeah. so it comes out and bends over. Just loops over. Okay. Okay, it looks like it was really tight up against the wall, and I didn't know if he was restricting your airflow coming out well, even yeah. further. It, it has a natural bend and laying on the ground and going up to the fan. Yeah, yeah and that's suitable. Try, that's not to, so, to smash anything. You, you just – how much of a of a trap, I guess, have, is created from where you, – you said it comes out, hits the ground, and goes up. How much of a how much of a trap is created there? That's not really, um, I guess, so much as important as the the north side of the or the outlet side of the motor. 
Um, yeah. But there's well, but if, if anything, getting, any now, kind of bends like that's going to restrict flow. So yeah, well, this, it, it, if you're getting smell in there in your in your area that much, it's either not coming out of the laser at all, or it's being exhausted. It's it's coming out somewhere after the outlet of the fan. Well, I'm looking to. Is that your soffit to the basically? I guess it'd be. I don't know if your camera's reversed or not. Towards the flag side of the your room, is that an open soffit? Um, it, this is a shed, so it's plywood out there. I cut a hole through it, put a metal. So were you the it. were you the one that posted it posted earlier about you couldn't get your pipe or your hose to connect? Was that you? No, I or actually some, had the else. same same damn problem. It took me forever to get it stretched around that, and if I had to do it again. Somebody else said I would have shut the inside of it and taped it down. The reason why I'm looking yeah. at that, because on some of those sheds, they have an open soffit on the edge, on the ends. On it the, could pull the air from the outside back that's in. That's exactly what I'm looking at, because if that's an open soffit where that flag's at, he could be recirculating the air coming right back yeah. into his shed, and that would be why he'd be getting a high volume of smell. Yeah, that, yeah. that could be a possibility. Or if, you have, or if you have a gable vent on that, because most sheds have a gable vent or a soffit vent, or a uh, we have a ridge gable, vent. We have a vent up there that I have the insulation stapled around to try to stop any air coming through it. I'm sure it can get a little bit in, but we've tried to mitigate that as much. That, uh, you'd be surprised at how the smallest little you, gap, you, when you're pulling that much volume of air, you'd be surprised at how much the smallest gap can pull those fumes back in. Well, but if you're blocking it right as it goes out, that's one thing. But if that soffit runs the whole length of that shed, as that sco as smoke escapes, it's going to billow back down and around and get sucked right back up into any part of that soffit and then drawn back through your room or through yeah, your that, area that's there. All, that's all pretty closed off. Um, okay. But you're, but you're gable, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some uh, silicone and clear, clear up those cells and put some plastic over it to totally mm -hmm. su to shut it off. Um, because, like, I have three little windows in here. Um, uh, you won't see. Another you thing see you could there. do is you could do, if you continue to have the issue, you could end up coming out your exhaust. I would hate to think to try to do this, but you could basically come out and try to get your exhaust above your roof line if you no keep noticing that you have gable problems. Mm-hmm. Or the soffit problems, so that way it would help to get it above the roof line. Okay. Do one of those capped, do one of those capped, uh, like heater vents for, for furnaces that come up. It has the cap, and then just put like a, a baffle, stove. like you do for your like a stovepipe, stove. yeah. And then just put a put a. Um, they make these baffles. They're about four inches thick. They're butter. They're they're spring open and close. So when you're blowing air out, they'll close or open. And then they'll, they'll close back up to keep a backdraft, a back, back, backdraft preventer, basically. Um, yes. Yeah, just... How okay. much uh, wood cutting have you done, or wood cutting or engraving have you done on that laser? Two weeks worth. Okay. Uh, one thing to check, um, pop open the fan, check the blades on it. I would be willing to bet they're completely chock full of soot from the wood. Okay. So uh, um, I, I try to get more people to do this. I have it on mine. Um, I have a, a filter system on mine uh, right before my fan. Um, and I can run one day of production before I have to swap, swap out my filter because it's plugged. So the wood creates an amazing amount of smoke and people just don't realize it. Um, so the other thing that I see from your setup is uh, that exhaust fan does need to be closer to the outside. You want that as short as possible. Um, usually, I tell people if you can get it down under six feet, that's good. Under three feet's even better. Um, I think all of mine. I think right now mine is at six feet, but I'm running a, a huge fan on mine because mine's, mine's running, running about four feet. feet. Four feet. Okay, so yeah, so you'll be okay at that. Um, yeah, I, I would just tack up that the uh, the exit side of that black line where it's bent right off of the thing. Just kind of tack it up to the wall, make it a little bit more of a soft co uh, corner there, and check your fan blades. Make sure that they're not just chock full of uh, smoke. Perfect. Thank you. What? I hey, think Travis, Brian's going through some please. issues. <laughs> There's a fly in here, man. 
there's a you fly got, and it keeps landing on my face and 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 buzzing me and it's and it's making me angry. I'm trying to kill it. I thought you was gonna do some kind of body Tourette's or something because you just all of a sudden start. <laughs> <laughs> might be that new hair you got on your face attracting it. Yeah, it might be. I'm starting to get lazy. I grow mine and that's they like it. Yeah. So, all right. Um, hey, Danny, does that make you feel better? <laughs> I don't think I have any new news um, on the uh, support side other than that firmware thing. I was There's just an awful to lot of people in here with else. nobody talking. Yeah, so Arthur, I was thinking we David, could maybe field a few Camille, questions. Eric, Kevin, Mr. M. I got something for you, Brian. Okay. I just got my laser delivered uh, about an hour ago, and I got it uncrated in the garage here. Okay. And uh, you were saying that the new ones are coming with the uh, inline fan? Yeah, they're starting to roll that out, and I think some of them are already being placed. That looks like uh, Scott's got the new style on his. So um, I didn't. I got the old style. Okay. There's um, there's not it, – it's hard to put a date on it. We've tried to quantify this as, as best as we can. Let me choose the right screen again since I'm so good at that all the time. Um, it looks like uh, on containers 103 to 111 it will be a mixture. You know, um, okay. so – what, whichever one you're assigned, that's that's the one it was supposed to be. Because you know, there's no way to fully implement this. They'd have to, you know, stop the chain somehow, you know, to to make a hard start date on it. So they kind of roll it out a little at a, a little at a time. So I just um, need to go get me an eight inch fan from uh, Amazon or something. If uh, if the noise is an issue, which is usually the only reason we get rid of those green fans, because they move plenty of air. They're just noisy as heck. Um, yeah. Then yeah, and I think I've got an article on that. What's the best Soft one to system. get? Um, a lot of people get the cloud lines. I just put the link to the changes. Oops. Okay. That was the wrong thing. I I pasted something unrelated in there. You can disregard. That's just camera specs. Well, one thing to um, keep in mind: the original fan that you got generates about twice the amount of CFM than what this new fan does. The the old fans have a lot more suction power. Okay. The yeah, the old ones, the green ones are about four eighty two CFM is what I've got here. And this one's like two seventy something or two eighty something. Let me go back and look at that. Um you've got uh Nova thirty five. I have a fifty one. Um oh okay. Yeah, I I was gonna look back and see which fan that Scott got. Uh, Nova, you have a Nova 35, Scott? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, supposed to be three, yeah, 380 CFM. Is that what it shows on yours? So it's a little less. Um, Ooh, who's whistling? I don't know. Uh, on yours, Donnie, yeah, the cloud line. Let me find that aftermarket one, and I'll pop it up here real quick. Let's see. Here we go. I think I got it this time, and I'll put a link in there as well uh, for this article. Okay. Um, but here, here's a little more information on the stock fans, the older ones, the newer ones. You know, some basic stuff, uh, and then there's links to all of them. Uh, and then here's some info on the AC Infinity. Uh, there's the S8. You know, and it's about 39 decibels. It moves 807 CFM. So it's it's a monster. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that. Sure, sure. And if you do get one, also on that, on that. Holy um, crap! Yeah, that hurt. Uh, there's an adapter that you'll need to get, and there's a link to it right here if you want it to interface with the machine and have the machine turn it on and off. Now, a lot of people choose to just use the remote controller and kick it on a few minutes before they start their job to mitigate what we were talking about earlier about the spool up time on those inline fans. Right. So, okay. 
Yeah, because I have an S8. I mean, I mean, I got a 63. I got an S8, and then I got a 25 foot run that runs basically from the one side of my garage to the outside of my garage underneath the door. And uh, I mean, I haven't had any problems with it. What I, I mean, then I actually bought the adapter, but then I ended up plugging it into a, another outlet. That way, it was closer to the out, uh, outside. That way, and then I have a damper on the outside, so if it gets colder or whatever, or it's hot outside, nothing comes back in. Right. But uh, the S8 man is pretty beast. I mean, I. Only time I really get any smell is if, uh, if I don't wait a second or two after it stopped. I just open it up. Other than that, I mean, it sucks pretty much all of it out. So, I mean, uh, those inlines are pretty good. Well, I've got an inline eight, and I'm piping it 70 feet. And I've got a separate line out there, so I have a switch mount on the wall. I can't use the remote. But that mm -hmm. inline eight is awesome. It, it'll do nice. the job. Nice. Yeah. Donnie, if you just come out the back, do a, was it a six to eight reducer? As soon as you come out the back, go to eight immediately. Don't keep okay. it to six before you get to it. Just let it pull the volume it needs to pull. The fan needs to pull. Okay. And then the remote that comes with it, I just have mine laying on top right by the controller. And that way I can just hit the remote can, the remote, now, remote button for the fan before I hit the start button and let it spool. Yeah. And yeah. if you choose to have it with the machine and you don't anticipate adjusting the speed, if I'm not mistaken, when you remove the controller, it defaults to high speed all the time. So you don't even have to use the controller if you're going to have it plugged into the machine for it to control. So I believe put, that's correct. But put a filter in it as close to the machine as you can. I did. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going to exhaust it at. And I don't know if I'm going to go up into the attic and take it through one of my big uh, attic vents I have up there. Uh, you know, I got a pretty big size attic vent throughout the attic everywhere. Or if I'm going to take it and take it through the garage door and just let it blow out, like cut a hole in my garage door and blow out the, the garage door. I don't know if I want to, which one I want to do. What part of the country do you live in? Florida. Oh, okay. No snow issues. Yeah, I'd, I'd run it out the door <laughs> and then pull it in when you're not using it. Yeah. You can go to the right there my front there. door, and I don't want to, you know, exhaust it. And then, like, right around the corner is the, you know, entryway gotcha. into my house. So, gotcha. Not sure what I want to do yet. Hey, Brian, how do the new uh, Thunder Inline fans compare to the uh, AC Infinities? uh let's look at that so provided this stuff that i have in here is right these are the new fans um so you the can purchase inch, them right you can purchase the fans directly can you what the 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 ones we have the, the hangwan yeah the new uh the new online fans i'm sure you can you can't none of that stuff really comes from us because of the machines all come from thunder china and kits so we right. don't have spare fans and chillers and all that stuff. Uh, you could get it direct, or I'm sure you could find them on Amazon. You might not get the same deal, you know, <clears> say <throat> by in bulk or whatnot. They work directly with the manufacturers. But um, it looks like I think the they're cheaper. Inch, yeah, they're cheaper than the cloud lines. Um, let's see. I'm what is it? Three twelve on the six inch, but nobody usually looks at the six inch. Uh, Seven thirty five on the eight inch is what the volume is on our stock fan, the HF 200 PE, which is this one. So that's not too shabby because the cloud line S eight is eight Oh seven. So, I mean, it's not far behind, you know, 40 right. CFM or so, uh, the lower price. volume one. Um, I don't, I don't know how much a Han and Guan is. I don't price anything here. Everything's okay. all warranty for me. I think the eight inch. I think the eight inch was like less than a hundred bucks. It may be. I'm looking for it. I, I, I stumbled across it. And now I can't find it. I think it's one sixty nine. That's what I paid for mine. Something like that. But the, oh, eight, the eight inch. Yeah, yeah, the eight inch. Uh, the eight the inch eight cloud inch line is, really is about one sixty nine. Are we yeah. talking about the Han and Guan price? The Han and Guan. I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's cheaper. I just can't find the page that. Uh, Unless unless you're running eight inches out the exhaust of the motor, I mean, eight inches is really not going to benefit you that much because you're still creating, you're converging it back down to six anyways. 
the outlet ports on the new machines are eight also, and it come with eight inch ducting now on those eight inch fans. Oh, are they? they were sending out. Oh, yeah. cool. Mm. I think we my last. Hey Brian, <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that. Hey Brian, <clears throat> wasn't that something you and I was talking about? What's that? <laughs> Remember when you and I you when you and I had that conversation about having the uh, ports on the back, quit reducing them, make them all eights. Oh yeah, well they're not all eights. I think thirty five is still six. Oh. So, but on the fifty one and sixty three, they're eights. But My new 63 should be an 8, then. Your new 63 should be an 8 with that big okay. Han Guan 8-inch fan on it, yeah. Oh, okay. They're a little noisier. I think they're a little bit noisier than the uh, cloud lines. I don't know if I have I'll volume. Yeah. I'll just be running it off my central system anyways, but... Yeah, 70 dB. Isn't that crazy? Oh, wait. Yeah, 70 dB. I don't know if that's right. And then the cloud line's 48. <laughs> So, but run, still 70s. Fan. Okay, the, it's the better than Infinity that. Infinity eight inch eight inch one is a uh, thirty nine. Yeah, thirty nine. Oh, it decibels? is. That's right. It's thirty nine. I was looking at the S10. Yeah, it's thirty nine. Yeah, it's thirty nine dB. Yeah. It's yeah. So, so and still... I just threw a link. Anyone who's running uh, longer runs, um, I just put in a a, a link for a, the eight inch booster. Um, and I highly recommend getting those if you're running super long runs just to help that thing out a little bit. They don't, and it's not going to work as a exhaust fan on its own, but you know, it'll, it gives you an extra 428, uh, CFM for airflow. So it'll just kind of help boost that up a little bit. Or prevent the end yeah. fan from working so hard. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you put it in, if you put it, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. The caveat would be if you install that in a short run, you're actually going to impede the flow quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, this so that is just long runs only. Yeah. And yeah. you would want that if you're, right at the very, very tail end. Yeah. If you're exactly. running 10, 10, 10 foot or more, probably I'd say it'd be beneficial. Anything less than that, you're probably going to hurt it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'd, I'd love to start seeing more uh, exhaust systems like mine out there. You haven't seen mine then, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> Mine's all I got, like, I got a, a little hard piped. I've got a 15 foot, 12 inch uh, central trunk with a 1200 CFM fan right at at the exhaust, and then I'm running right now. I'm only running three drop six inch drops off of it, but I guess I'm gonna have to add an eight inch drop to it for my 63. <laughs> <laughs> but but it it all it all pulls, and I got um um electronic dampers to where i could just flip an outlet switch it's got, i got a box or a control box so i flip the switch it nice. opens or closes the damper they're spring loaded they're spring loaded closed and electrically driven open yeah i didn't are, are, so you, i'm still you gonna, the dampers on mine i have to go around and do the levers on which laser i'm using at the time hey, um, Jason, I, I went all could, out i went all wire out. your electric one for the thunder uh to the port on the back it would, it, kick, it would kick it open and it, closed for you it, when, oh, yeah. when the machine runs. Huh? Oh no! Well, the thing is, is they, they, they open. Let's see. They're spring-loaded closed, so they got to be driven open. So it takes about 20, 20 or thirty seconds for the the valve to completely open. Oh, it's one of those like a, a motorized stepper, like it's in a timer or something. Probably it's probably got a l real low gear ratio on it little motor in there uh, well i mean it. it's it's a it's a hvac uh zone um gotcha zone damper so it like opens and closes you know opening up different areas of the building or wherever your ac is going it's the same same thing there um but i just i flip the switch to on it opens up the valve and uh still turn the fan on from there and then the fan pulls you know, whatever gotcha. it pulls. I, and I got it on a Rio stat so it, I could adjust I can adjust how fast or slow I want the fan to go. Depending gotcha. on how many how many how many of the runs are open at one time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What did, what did you put on for a fan? Because I I wanna upgrade mine. I'm running a, a AC Infinity S twelve right now, but I wanna get a little more. Oh no, this this is this is a an industrial um an industrial fan. I'll, I have to, I'll have to go look and see. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's a 12-inch, <laughs> yeah. big 12-inch inline fan. 
Yeah, and the Waffle House down the street's filling with smoke every time they cook bacon. <laughs> Just go take it off the top. <laughs> One of those would be an awesome what? thing to use. I mean, that oh, it, thing would move on. Man, when it when it's when I'm cutting wood or something with it, and you see the smoke coming off. You don't you don't see it an ounce of smoke rise off the wood. It just straight slicks off the back of the wood. It pulls it, <laughs> it right pulls, out. It pulls it pulls it so hard it just it, it don't even have a chance. Yeah. Travis, <clears throat> you need to get the one I got in my paint booth. Um I mine's pretty strong. I mean when we were playing around with it, um one of the HVAC guys, we were testing it out and he walked underneath one of the ducks and it sucked the hat off of his head and sucked it all the way up in my air ducts, all the way up to the filter box. Good like, thing he had a filter box. <laughs> oh yeah, my, mine will do that. If you got if you got one of the or only one of those valves open, like because I have one that it comes down for my fiber laser, and then one that comes down for the the thunder. It's like a T off. Mm -hmm. If you're not using it, I block it off. I stick a piece of foam over it for now until I get my da my actual mechanical damper that I'm waiting on. Um, but yeah, it, it almost sucks that piece of foam up into. <laughs> Up Jeez. into the ducting, it's so strong. Yeah, I miss twelve hundred CF CFM. I just want so a little boat to filter for my my fiber. Here, I'm gonna go. I'll go take a picture of it. Hey, quick question, Brian. You yeah. guys can hear me. Sure. Um, I'm in my truck driving, so I don't know if it's loud or causing problems. But anyway, yeah, we... uh, <laughs> just got a quick. I got a quick question. I saw a post yours the other day, and it's not related to thunder, but it's. Uh, light burn for the fiber so you mm -hmm. were playing around with it right uh, right now obviously i have a dedicated old pc from like 2010 that i have windows i think seven in or something and i have easy cad on it how does that change with light burn would you just don't just keep a dedicated computer on the fiber or how no. that uh no I, I, put my, throw, put my head around that um it's a device. My my fiber laser is a device in Lightburn, just like my CO2 lasers. So I've got my um, Nova and both Odin's and Aurora all, you know, set up on one instance of Lightburn, and and you, you just switch between them. How is that? Is that what you were asking? Is it a USB like a USB connection then, or, it's, or yeah, it's still how USB. How does it connect? No, it, it's it's oh, got to be USB on on the fiber because that's the only kind of connection there oh, is. Oh yeah, on, yeah. On the... <laughs> Sorry. Right. Yeah, and, so you just and, have a USB you, hub and you. You can. Um, you can have a hub. Sorry. I mean, I just I just plugged it into the computer, you know, um, that I'm oh, that I'm running gotcha. Lightburn on. Switch it around. Gotcha. Yeah, and keep yeah. in mind with Lightburn, you can run, I think it's up to 10 instances of Lightburn on the same computer at the same time. Um, so you can have one instance running for each of your lasers. Um, mm -hmm. So like with me, I've got multiple monitors. So I have one monitor for this laser, one monitor for this laser, but it's still all off of one PC. Yeah, and gotcha. in my case, I've got two computers yeah. and then I remote back and forth between them on multi-monitor setups and kind of do the same thing. And then video feeds through OBS are now through the NTI. Have you played with that, Travis? With, what was that? with NTI over OBS? Now I have all of my computers that run OBS. I'm running NDI and they're all sources. All the sources on all my OBS instances are all on all instances of OBS, no matter where wow. they are yeah. in the network. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I didn't mean to veer from your question, David. So, I mean, Kevin, sorry. Um, okay. But yeah, it, it, the the only way that the fiber will connect, at least with the EasyCAD 2 or 3 board, I think, is just USB. Uh, but I, you just okay. run the how same. Yeah. That, that version, right. I think, I'm not sure how the license will work when it comes out. You know, like, but but I know I think if you get the fiber version, it will still work for DSPs, kind of like how if you get the DSP version, it still works with G-code machines. Uh, but I'm not positive on that, so don't quote me on it. Um, gotcha. But well, right now, we'll like I, I just share, I got a, I share over the Wi-Fi in my house. So if I mm -hmm. do a design, I just uh, save it in a common folder mm -hmm. and I, and I pull it into the old computer with the EasyCAD on it and. Sure. It in. Yeah, and that's, yeah, I use, I don't know, I use I don't Dropbox know. for a similar 
you know, I, yeah, cause I have all of my stuff easy. available that way, yeah. but yeah, that, that's absolutely a good way to do it. Yeah. But I, I wasn't sure. sure if I had to get another version of Lightburn just for the laser or for the fiber laser. And if that seat, if that computer being that old with the Ram and everything would even, it, it would run it. It if would. it'll run, if it'll run Lightburn now, it'll run that one. You well, know, no, no, it's, it's just running easy cat. That's all it's on this thing now. Like, well, uh, what I'm saying is, is if you put light burn on it and it runs, then you'll be okay when yeah. fiber comes out. You see what I mean? If it'll run light burn, it'll run light burn. It, you know, if exactly. it doesn't, it won't. You can actually give it a shot if you want. But I'll tell you this, Easy Crash, uh, I'm surprised it runs on anything. So if you can run Easy Crash on that computer, I know you'll be able to run light burn on it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah Travis, so far, you... I had no problems with it. Yeah, but yeah, it should be fine. Gotcha. Thanks. Sure, doesn't mean to be your office thunder. Oh no, you're good, man. <laughs> There's my setup, Brian. Yeah, I that see looks it. pretty That's nice. nice. That does look nice. I think every, pretty much everyone's seen mine. Mine's just pretty green. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's where I that's where I got my inspiration to do mine was kind of. Is mine? Yeah, mine's hard yeah. pipe and then, uh, comes around, goes up through the ceiling there, and then upstairs is where my main motor and filter box it or it's sitting at mm -hmm. so, yeah I'll this just goes on the on the right hand side there or actually yeah on the right hand side yeah, right -hand motors side. right at motors the 90. Right so as soon as, as soon as it comes out of the motor it takes a 90 and goes right outside yeah mm -hmm. that's nice hey travis and i got plenty of room said that you should get i just looked up the specs on it it's four thousand for what uh, my CFMs on my other fans, four thousand. Oh, for your paint booth? Yeah, I think it's actually I think it's actually higher than that. But the one I looked at, the smaller than just that one's four thousand CFM. Yeah, because the yeah the, the one S12 I got like really... twelve hundred. What is S twelve? And for your for yours, Travis, with that run that you got, I mean, shoot, you how big is that your your trunk line? Is that twelve inch or ten inch? Uh, actually, I think we did. I don't know if we did 12 or if we did 14. Oh. Yeah, it's either 12 or 14. I guess so, it is. Yeah, because the fan I'm running only runs uh, 1604 CFM. So you're pulling twice the air that I am. The 8 inch Hanguan fan is uh, $89. Yeah, see, I would still go with the AC Infinity just for the noise. I like my the stuff only, being well, that, quiet. That fan I got, that big 12 inch I got, it's only 52 or 50, 51 or 52 decibels. It's, I, I, mean, it's, I don't think that's running. the right fan, author, um, because it's only showing 494 CFM. I think that's a different series because, because the, uh, the one that, that, one the, that HF the HF series that we have. That we Oh, there's a lot of feedback. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> You're getting that feedback. Um, the the HF 200 PE moves 746. Wait. No. Whoa. I have it in here. 735. 735 CFMs. And the one on that list is only 494. So... There's different series of of those, and so uh, that may not be the right one because that sounds a little bit low. Um, well, the, the AC CFM. Infinity, the AC Infinity uh, S8 on Amazon is 169. Yeah, I think that's what I had in that. Let's see, they might have changed. Yeah, I got 169 on the S8s, and they move 807. But that link. Um, that one right there, I don't think that's the fan that we send out. That's what I just wanted to clarify on because this one's only 494. And uh, the ones we send out are 700 and something. So I'm thinking the ones that we have are going to probably be more like 150, 140 uh, on cost if you were to find one. Yeah, the infinities, to... you have to watch the price on them because they'll bounce between 169 and 199. Yeah. Uh, Here's the parameters. I was trying to see the actual model number and see this. I don't see what model that actually is. Um, one of the things that I found is the HF200PE. I haven't found 
a real source on it, even on eBay. It, they're, they're scarce. There's some others that are similar, uh, but it wasn't that particular model. Um, and this is still new to me. All of the data that I have on it is just stuff that I've gotten, you know, from home base. So I haven't had any of those in my hands or looked at them or anything like that yet. So I'm kind of flying Play blind. Play music loud this. enough. You don't need to worry about the, the loudness of the fan. Yeah. So. Oh, right. Brian, well, is it, we ended up yeah. last week. I think it was uh, after 8 Eastern Standard. Yeah, we ran like three, four hours after. Yeah, it was. I think we got done. It was like eight on Eastern. Yeah, on my time it was. It was, it was a long one. Um, David asked about that RV antifreeze. Um, will it affect the chiller over time, or can you leave it in? I there's first uh, and Travis correct me if I'm wrong. There's actually two kinds of RV antifreeze. One of them is alcohol based and one of them is glycol based. Correct. You, and you the want glycol, the glycol based. Yeah. The glycol based one is the best and it is not corrosive per se. Uh, at least not like automotive antifreezes or the ethylene glycol or whatever it is uh, as far as seals and that kind of stuff. But it does, if I'm not mistaken, also uh, affect the silicone tubing. Uh, mm -hmm. and can cause it to deteriorate and swell and things like that over time. So it's best that any additive only be used when it's necessary and the rest of the time you flush it and run clean water in these closed loop systems. At least that's yep. always been well, my like, understanding. If you're, if you're going to run a little, you can, go ahead, Jason. No, as I was gonna say, I did a, a little, um, the video, it's on the site, but just putting a fish tank heater into the actual, chiller and an external 12 volt pump just to keep the water circulating and above freezing temperature when you're not using it i mean it cost me i think it's like less than 50 dollars to do it and you don't have to remove it when you're done using it because the chiller you can turn turn the pump off and the chiller will run just as it normally would anyways mm -hmm. so it's just it's something quick and easy to do it costs very little you don't have to worry about the antifreeze because an any antifreeze you use in that system will damage it at some point um because glycol we use glycol in the military for for de-icing aircraft and if you don't wash it after you get done using it it will corrode over time the aluminum and stuff um which is what the radiator i think is made of and those things or the cooling coils are made of aluminum so um yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of on. I'm I'm kind of on the fence with that. I I don't I don't think anything's good because it, like we were talking about before with with the the buildup of a static charge is possible um, with those as well. Regardless if it's better or well, if it's better or not, who knows? But um, mm -hmm. I, I just now on on the flip side, if you do want to use antifreeze, and there is a very specific type of antifreeze that you can get that is designed for industrial chillers. Um, Brian yeah. and I found it at one point. The downfall is when we found it, we could only buy it in, I think it was, what was it, 55 gallon drums or something like that, Brian? Yep. Yeah, yeah I think it was so. ridiculously expensive. Now, yeah. here's what, and I'll post this and pull it up. Here's Thunder China's approved antifreeze, which you can't find here. And if you could, it'd be $400 a gallon, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me pull this up here. It's anti, and this might have been what we were looking at, Travis. Let me know if you, this looks familiar to her. This is what the Clarion stuff is what the Chiller Company and, and um, Thunder Laser uh, oh. recommend. Um, but there it, like travis said this is a gen, you know uh, an industrial um coolant you know or ferrofluid or whatever it is and there's others out there and that's one thing that i'd like to experiment with at some point is some of those um performance engineered cooling fluids you know that are non-conductive and transfer heat well and are non-corrosive and things like that and they do make them there it, it's likely to be pretty expensive though the non-conduct <laughs> you know, no the non-conductive the non-conductive is the most important part. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because and, you know, because you're running, you're running matters. that fluid around a. Well, yeah, but yeah. I mean, uh, you're running that fluid through a tube that has a laser beam shooting through it, which creates static in itself. And if you have a fluid that 
traps that static and builds it, I mean, you got potential issues. Oh yeah, you're so charging biggest... you're charging that 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 cooling medium with that 30 kV out of that transformer every yeah. time the laser fires. So yeah, absolutely, you'll yep. get a jolt if you get a hold of that too. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh yeah. Brian, the one that that's, that's why that's why about. I avoid it altogether because once you once you say antifreeze, people just buy the cheapest stuff. Yes, there is proper stuff out there, but is it cost effective for you to yeah. buy it four hundred dollars a gallon or whatever it is, you know, ridiculous amount. Um yeah. if you were if you were in like Alaska, like Travis, then you might and need probably some. nine Man. not nine well, nine or ten months out of the year you're you're around freezing or, or pretty it, freaking yeah, just cold. run the line <laughs> outside back in, you're good. It it sounds to me, Travis, like you might be a good candidate for uh testing some different uh cooling fluids at some point. Yeah. So the, the just, one that um, you and I had found earlier that we were discussing about was one that was designed for um, it, it's it's it was actually designed for crypto mining, um, and it's where, where they can yeah where they submerge the entire computer in the the fluid. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, that's the one that we were originally uh, looking at. I think it was this. All one. of the properties were there. I mean, it wasn't corrosive. They used the same types of pumps and the same composites in the pump systems that we probably use in these uh s a pumps i'd say one thing if anybody's in here from the carolinas or stuff this weekend with the impending possible quote unquote ice storm you might just be best proactive if power to just start coming just a drain yeah just to be yeah, on the safe I mean, side even if you use a heater and a pump or whatever it's not going to do you any good if you ain't got no electricity to make it flow yeah yeah so anybody that's well, in guys, that path of that storm. Are y'all gonna have the after party? Do I need to yes. turn it over? Yeah, it people me. are people are asking <laughs> how to join now uh, for the after party. I, I think I think, I think I, Brian, I, I, think I see have, someone in here. We have people show up in the after party that ain't in the main part of the show. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, we actually have people start joining afterwards. Do I need to watch these and make sure everything's <laughs> no. on the up and up here? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why I'm we stop do not 